Hey, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Black Sun was originally published in 2020, and I was really excited to read this book. It sounded super interesting, and I think that Rebecca Roanhorse is relatively new to her work being published. Just reading the back cover, it looks like she won several awards starting in 2018 for Best New Writer. And here's the cover for Black Sun. Just a side note, I don't know why, but it is so annoying to me when book publishers publish the front cover and then they have this like um, summary page with all the reviews and stuff sticking out. Can we not make the cover go all the way to the end of the book? Sorry to start off on a negative point, but I don't know why it just bugs me so much whenever I was reading. So to go over a quick overview, set in a fictional reimagining of the pre-colonized Americas, Black Sun is a light fantasy adventure novel taking place in the fictional city of Toba. The story is really fast paced and an exciting read. I thought it was full of interesting characters whose stories are just beginning to be told as this is the first in the Between Earth and Sky series. So going into the plot and pacing of Black Sun, I thought the story was comfortably fast paced. The story definitely keeps you engaged, but it also provides enough exposition throughout to ensure that you're able to follow along. Although I have to mention that the narration does change from chapter to chapter and we also see some time skips occur, which may make the story a little bit difficult to follow at times. So going right into the characters, the book actually has a glossary with all of our character names and a quick summary at the front of the text. And personally, whenever I see that, I'm expecting like full on fantasy. We have, you know, 10,000 characters to remember something like Lord of the Rings. However, pretty much every single character who might have any meaning at all in the story, no matter how minor, is listed in that glossary. So definitely like don't fret when you see the names in there because it's, again, like a super comprehensive guide. I will say I personally didn't think the glossary would have been needed as we got quite a bit of character exposition if it weren't for the narrative style of jumping uh, between characters and also having time jumps from each chapter. But with that aside, we're actually going to start talking about the three main characters in my view of the text. So starting with Narampa, she's the sun priest in Tova, which is like the holy city on this continent and in this society. She actually comes from poverty and has worked her way into what was once considered to be the most powerful position in the city. She's trying desperately to regain the former power of this role in an effort to reform some of the ancient traditions of the city. Secondly, we have Serapio, who is traveling to Tova for the upcoming solar eclipse. And he definitely has his own motivations, which we find out gradually more about throughout the text. And third, we have to mention Zealia, who is the captain of the ship that Serapio is traveling on to Tova. She's an outcast and a foreigner in this region. So I did also want to address some of the major themes and elements that I saw within the story. Firstly, there's a broad theme of loneliness and a search for community within the story and all of the main characters that we follow. While all of our protagonists present this loneliness in separate ways, we also see this idea of separation and fracture within the community as a whole at a much larger level and even within the continent as we learn more as the story progresses. Secondly, we have this idea of exploration of what actually makes a villain. So personally, I have nothing against villains. I love villains so in, in so many movies and 
TV shows, comic books, anything, I a lot of the times find the villain a lot more appealing as a character and a lot more interesting than the hero. But this is something that we delve pretty deeply into and the author really and the author seems to present her case on this element within the story. As we're following characters like Serapio and Zialia who have potentially done slightly unsavory things in their past in order to survive and grow and become who they are today. We also have characters who are working alongside Naranpa in this supposed priesthood, supposedly the highest and most idyllic persons within this, within this society, who are constantly working to outmaneuver and defy Naranpa in order to hold on to or continue to gain more power. The author also presents a case of seemingly what makes a villain. So Serapio, someone who was raised in a very loving house, but due to tragic events, which you learn about really early on in the story, he is essentially left orphaned and to fend for himself in a lot of ways and is really left without a lot of affection. And that loneliness seemingly drives him towards his incessant goals with exacting an idea of who he is, who he's supposed to be, based on a destiny presented to him. The third thing I want to talk about, a little bit less of a theme and more just an observation on my end, but I really noticed that the author was writing seemingly very confident characters. So even though we have characters who are struggling with loneliness and looking for their place in society, they're all still confident with who they are and their role within that society. And certainly throughout the text, they experience doubt as new relationships unfold and events continue to occur. However, I definitely think that they stand firm in their beliefs and their sense of self throughout. And the last point I want to talk about is the presentation of an extremely advanced society. On one hand, the priesthood within the story holds democratic forums to discuss and resolve any issues. They have multiple written languages and currency systems. And there's also elements of fluid gender expression and sexuality being represented within the society. I think understanding how advanced these societies potentially were is extremely important, especially as we begin to view critically from a westernized lens, which tends to paint pre-colonized societies as uncivilized. And while this text is fictional, I think it paints a pretty good case that the so-called uncivilized argument is really very untrue. So now moving on to some good and bad elements of the story, in my opinion. So first, good point. I thought the world building was really well done. Great character development and introductions to characters. It's super easy to follow in that regard. The author gives us a ton of exposition and... It's very clear and easy to understand what's going on. Secondly, I thought the characters were really likable as well. Even though we're looking at, again, people who are potentially villainous, we're able to see under that initial description and actually look at the person underneath there, what potentially created them to be who they are today and uncover their motivations for why they continue to act in ways that they do. Next, I thought that the writing was really fun in terms of writing like an adventure and action story and any sequences where there were where there was action or fighting or training, anything of that regard. I thought the author did a really fantastic job of painting that picture and I was definitely super immersed in those moments of the story. I think my main critique of the story would simply be the narrative choice of changing the perspective for, for nearly every chapter, as well as incorporating the time skips occasionally within the chapters. I think 
it just made the story a little bit harder to follow because because of that element I needed to go back and reference who characters were in the glossary. I needed to remind myself of what situation was going on within this character's arc. And certainly I understand why it was done in a narrative choice to build suspense and not give everything away from for a character's perspective so that there's more mystery there. But it was done in a way that I think made it a little bit hard to follow the narrative at times when I wanted to kind of just plow through and and learn as much as I could. And it kind of forced me to slow down and double check things, which distracted from the overall reading experience for me. So going into my final thoughts, overall, I thought it was a super enjoyable and really fun read. I will say that for about 450 pages worth of text, I do wish that the resolution had wrapped up a few more of the elements that were presented in this story. Of course, it's setting up for a series of novels, but again, for me, just wish there had been a little bit more payoff considering the length of the story. I pretty much tore through it and definitely enjoyed the experience. Looking back on it, having finished it a few weeks ago, I don't know if it stuck with me in the way that I thought it might while reading it, but if you're looking for a fun, exciting adventure story, I think this definitely could be a good option for you. Have you read this book? I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm absolutely wrong about everything I said here? Would love to know if you've read any of the other works by the author. If you have any recommendations, feel free to leave them below. I have a pretty decent reading list ahead of me, but I definitely appreciate any recommendations and I'll be sure to check out uh, any suggestions that you guys have. So thank you for that. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video.